Imagine being able to predict the future, but instead of using this superpower to make a bunch of money in the stock market or avoid an RNG death IRL, you instead use this power to play World of Warcraft Arena and climb rating. Excellent priorities. Even if you aren't a mechanical god, you would have a huge advantage over your opponents because nothing would catch you by surprise. Your defensive trades would be almost perfect, and your kill setups would be deadly because everything was planned in advance. But here's the honest truth. This superpower really does already exist in WoW, and in every arena game you play, there's a brief moment where you can tap into these powers and increase your chance of winning regardless of matchup. And no, it's not an add-on or something you can buy on the Blizzard store. Tapping into this power is totally free, and you can do it once every game. But how and where can we unlock this cheat code? Well, it begins here, the starting room, which is the most underrated stage of any arena game. And today, we're going to be explaining why. We'll be breaking down starting room prep at four different levels, teaching you step by step how the best players use this critical moment of the game. And once you know what to do in the prep room, you're going to feel 100% more confident once the gates actually open. Now, as a heads up, everything that we're about to cover in today's guide applies to everyone, regardless of role, class, or even spec. And if you're looking for more personalized help with your gameplay, head over to skillcap.com. For as little as $6.99 a month, you're gonna gain instant access to over 2,000 guides, which are designed alongside some of the best players in WoW history. In fact, we're so confident that you will climb rating while using our site, that we even offer a money-back guarantee if you don't rank up. So what are you waiting for? Visit the links below to get started with an exclusive discount offer. Anyway, let's get back to the video. We'll begin at level one with the most basic function of the waiting room, target selection. Now, if you play DPS, you probably already do this. Well, at least we hope you do. But before the gates even open, you've probably spent some time thinking about who you're going to attack, since this is the most fundamental task you have, and picking the right initial target is, more often than not, the first separation point between a win and a loss. As a melee, you're probably thinking of who will take the most damage, selecting targets that give you the most uptime. Well, and hopefully thinking of the other swap targets if and when you're getting kited. Range DPS can be a bit more flexible with initial targeting, but should typically attack whoever their melee is hitting, since they're the ones who are the most limited. In solo shuffle, this is a big deal because of the limited communication, and this is typically why, as a melee DPS, it's massively important to call targets in the starting room of any solo shuffle, thinking about who you can pressure the hardest with limited uptime. Now, if you want a complete guide on what classes are good to attack and why, be sure to check out our latest Solo Shuffle Targeting Guide. As a ranged DPS, you might be wondering, okay, well, what if my melee is shot calling the worst possible target here? Then, well, of course, you should step in and suggest an alternative. And hopefully they're going to agree, but even if they don't, you're still better off as a ranged DPS simply just attacking whoever your melee is hitting. Now, regardless of who wins the war of negotiation in the beginning stages of the game here, picking a good target is the most fundamental starting room task, but we can take things a step further. Enter level two, which is where we need to think about swapping talents. Again, this is an extremely fundamental task, and we're going to assume most people do this, but if you're someone who doesn't think about talent swaps, then be sure to listen up here. This is a big problem when it comes to talent builds, and we're all guilty of it. Many players, including ourselves, will simply go to a website and copy a preset talent build, importing it into their game and never swap talents once. Now, we're not saying there's something wrong with copying the build of another player, because having a meta build to start with can be really useful. The real issue is not knowing which talents need to be changed depending on individual matchups, because this is something rank one players do often and is never obvious with cookie cutter builds. Now, as a practical example here, Balanced Druids might copy the default build from a rank one Boomkin, which doesn't include the remove corruption talent, allowing them to remove curses. 
but if the same player were to then load into a solo shuffle against a shaman or a warlock, they would then accidentally grief their team with no way of removing hexes or any amplified curses. PvP talents, they're no different. Just ask any healer how many times they've been in a lobby with a ret paladin who doesn't spec into Blessing of Sanctuary against teams with fears or stuns. It's incredibly frustrating from the healer's point of view because they were counting on their partners to get them out of CC and now they might need to use a PvP trinket inefficiently because of this mistake. Now it might seem minor, we get it, but these small talent decisions really matter when it comes to taking control of a game. And in the starting room, you need to be ready to make small changes to better suit the matchup. Now we've built the second part of our starting room prep, not only do we need to pick the right target, but we need to make sure we're swapping talents if needed. Now though, it's time to do some real work. Level three is where we need to think more about the actual game, starting with our team's win condition. Picking a target and swapping talents was the easy part. Now we need to use the waiting room to think about how our team will land a kill. This is obviously comp specific here, but the general formula for scoring kills is pretty universal at this point. And you already know, the basic strategy is to combine damage and control and simply just repeat this process over and over. And obviously there's a lot more complexity involved here, especially for setup based comps, where getting routine CC setups is vital for winning the game. But everyone, regardless of comp or matchup, needs to have a solid plan to roadmap the game. In the starting room, you should already be thinking about your win condition, but in a few different layers. Layer one is recognizing what CC tools you have. Nearly every team will have a primary stun, which will typically be used on the kill target. Then there's a split. Some comps will have hard CC options like Freezing Trap, Polymorph, or even Fear and Cyclone, which you'll then need to slot into your CC setups. Other teams will have Micro CC, relying more on attrition to gradually wear the enemy team down. And in the starting room, you need to think about how to carve a path to victory using your team's tools. Imagine being a mage in the starting room with any melee. You know they have something you lack a stun which you can use to make it easier to land CC on the healer. That means that when you see them stun the kill target, you know you should already be in a position to DB sheep. You knew this because you had this planned in the starting room. Instead of letting the game happen passively in the background, you took the time to script your own future. Our second layer of planning when conditions is understanding your team's offensive cooldowns and how that will dictate the pace of the game. Now, just like comps split in two directions based on CC, they also split based on cooldown timings. Compare a Frost EK with a one-minute Pillar of Frost to a 90-second Serenity from a Monk or a Balanced Druid's Incarnation, which can be anywhere from two to three minutes. These are three different offensives that you need to play around. In the pregame, you need to think about the cadence of your team's offensive cooldowns and use that information to consider how often a defensive can be forced and how you can fit your own offensives or CC options into your teammates' cooldown windows. If you're playing with a Fire Mage, you know they're going to do a ton of damage during combustion, which means you should plan to play around the cooldown, both at the beginning of the game, lining up your offensives for the initial clash, and then in the mid to late game, making sure to check Omni CD to see when Combustion is back up for another push so you can be ready to line up your own burst or CC in order to make the setup more powerful. By doing so, we created a simple roadmap. Step one, pick a target. Step two, force one or more defensives and swap if needed. Step three, set up an even stronger kill on the original target. All of this can and should be planned out before the gates even open. Our layers of planning win conditions include knowing what our setups will look like, how we'll use our offensives, and knowing how to combine those to push through enemy defensives. Now that we've added our own win conditions into our pregame planning, we have our final step, which is actually the reversal of everything that we just planned. Level 4 planning means thinking about our team's lose conditions, piecing together how the enemy team will try and win. Since we just planned our own team's win condition, we should assume that the enemy team is doing just the same thing, which means walking through each level from the enemy team's point of view. 
first, we need to think who the enemy team might attack, and this is especially important as a healer. You should think about who on your team is most vulnerable, so you know who to pre-hot or pre-shield so that you aren't caught off guard during the first initial clash. This is equally important to think about as a DPS, especially if you think you're going to be the kill target. You might be the only caster in a lobby filled with melee DPS, and before the gates even open, you should probably plan on getting attacked, thinking about how you're going to sequence your mobility, how you'll position, and being ready to play under pressure. No matter what role you play, though, you should also be thinking about what control options the enemy team has available for you or your team. If you're a healer, you should already be thinking about who's most likely to pressure you with CC. If you're playing against a hunter, you can probably assume that you're going to be trapped very early into the game, which means you need to be a bit more proactive with how you play. If you're playing against a rogue, then you need to think about how you're going to sequence your PvP trinket with your healer once the game starts, planning exactly what stun you'll trinket, having a plan ready for smoke bomb or shadowy duel. While you're thinking about the enemy team's control in the starting room, you should also think about their offensive cooldowns because, well, as we already know, lockdown combined with burst is how games are won and you need to be ready for the enemy team's setups. This involves pre-planning your first cooldown trade, thinking to yourself, if the enemy team uses their offensive and I'm stunned, then I'll immediately trade out my CC. Now, when doing so, you should think about what enemy offensive you need to look out for that will trigger your trade, and by doing so, you can be ready for the first pressure point of every game, having the ability to react quickly under pressure because you already made your decision in the starting room. Finally, whenever you're in the prep room, you should make a mental note of your team's defensive cooldowns and be ready to adjust your gameplay based around your team's defensive budget. If you're a healer playing with a warlock, you already know that Dark Pact will probably be sent out on the first stun, and you should be ready for your warlock to use it early if they're the kill target. And in turn, you can adjust your gameplay accordingly, holding on to your defensives for later. As a DPS, you need to be thinking about the same things here. Playing with a Holy Paladin means you're going to get bopped, freedomed, and sacked at some point, and you should be planning your own defensives to fill in any voids between your healer's defensive trading, while at the same time making sure you aren't greedy and recognizing key moments where your healer might not be able to use their defensives. At the end of the day, there's a lot of information that should be going into your pre-game planning. The starting room is not simply made for picking targets and swapping talents. Instead, it's a brief moment where you can visualize the game before the gates open, having plans ready for how you're going to navigate each matchup offensively and defensively. Now, as a reminder, don't forget about our 400 rating game guarantee, which you can only find over at skillcap.com. For as little as $6.99 a month, we guarantee that you're going to see the results you want or you're going to get your money back and there's no questions asked. So if you want to gain access to our world-class guides and network of pros to start climbing the ladder, be sure to click on the discount link below and sign up today. For now, though, we want to thank you all for watching, and we'll see you next time.